So we've been asking you whether devolution has been of benefit uh, to you. Let's take a look at what you've been telling us so far. All right, here's your first one. S. Murakana, the problem is the greedy leaders, though devolution is good. Billy Juma Otieno, devolution hasn't brought any benefits to its people. It has led to embezzlement of funds. Oh, my. Next one. Uh, Chuma Moto, you say <laughs> devolution has opened up Kenyans' eyes. They see things clearly, even though some of the governors only care about themselves. I feel that some seats should be dissolved, like the women reps and senator. Wow, okay. A final one here, uh, Babu Michael. One, you say, yes, to some extent, devolution has helped most Kenyans, and maybe it depends on the governor you elected. Some of them are on a looting mission, as we have seen in most occasions, court battles here and there. And uh, Governor Ruto, uh, former Governor Ruto, uh, and hopeful, I think, Governor Ruto. <laughs> Yes. At some point, uh, let me come to you from those responses and what you're seeing in Nairobi County and the fact that now the uh, Council of Governors have requested in the matter of Nairobi to hold an emergency meeting with President Kenyatta over what becomes of the state of the county. Your thoughts on that and the impact of corruption on devolution? Uh, I think uh, issues of devolution are problems afflicting the entire Kenyan nation. Uh, the, the, the corruption we have also seen in national government are even more mind-boggling. Uh, we have seen uh, cases of serious failures on the part of the county governments and on the part of the MCAs, on the part of the MPs, on the part of the ministers. That is a disease which I hope uh, should be cured. Mm -hmm. But that does not in any way mean devolution should not be allowed to take root. Okay. Devolution is a good idea, and if the current governors have no idea how to manage counties, if the next batch of governors still have no idea how to manage counties, mm -hmm. let's hope that the children in primary school and secondary school <laughs> will come and ensure <laughs> in, that in devolution city. works. Now, what do you think of uh, the Council of Governors uh, seeking to meet President? Kenyatta urgently over the Nairobi yeah, matter? I, I think they should. There must be a number of issues that need to be addressed, including the manner and the way Sonko was apparently manhandled. Uh, I don't think that was the best way of dealing with it because I don't see any governor refusing to go before EACC or before the DCI whenever summoned. It is proper. Summon so they have issued summons. Uh, issue summons. If, 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 if any governor was called to come and see the DCI or the police commissioner, mm -hmm. that governor will say, yes, I'll be there tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Why not? Okay. You don't need to harass in that manner, Ms. Handelim kick him out. Uh, it's, it's, it's a show of very crude force. Okay. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the larger issues of devolution and what BBI is proposing. We just want to show you right now uh, some of the issues that have been uh, brought out by the report. There they are on your screen that counties should get 35 uh, or 50 percent of the loss, last, I beg your pardon, audited accounts, 70 uh, percent to development, 30 to recurrent, re recurrent expenditure in terms of use of funds. Wards proposed to get at least 30% of the development budget. Um, let's take a look at other proposals. Uh, a health service commission for human resourcing. Um, in as far as a vacancy in the deputy, uh, deputy governor's uh, position. If uh, the appointment by the governor does not, fit, uh, does not go through or if the governor fails to appoint within a certain uh, period of time, then the speaker would make uh, a proposal that was to be okayed by the county assembly. And finally, new funds tied to the completing of old projects, which means, for instance, in the case of Bomet, that if there's, there are projects that you had begun, that uh, the governor who follows you should you know, be required to complete those projects first or write to the Ministry, I, I believe, of Finance and give a very good reason why those projects can't be continued before getting new funds. Do you think that will be good? Some of the proposals are okay, uh, but when you talk about 35%, 35% of what? You, they are talking about 35% of uh, the last audited account. Correct. That is what Jubilee has been saying they are giving to counties. 35% of the last audited accounts. And the last audited accounts are accounts of ordinary revenues of five years ago. I want the BBI report to go ahead, and that is why last I support audited it, accounts, correct. and say the last audited accounts of uh, the... Um, it should not even just talk about the last audited account. The last uh, account, certified accounts 
of the ordinary revenues of the preceding year. But you, like that, we should uh -huh. be talking about the last financial year of funds we already know. When you talk about 35% of funds of five years ago, mm -hmm. that is very little money. It is what they have been saying. In real terms, it comes to 14%. And what do you think of the proposal to make sure that first projects are completed before new That's money? a good idea, but uh, you know, even the current uh, provisions in the Public Finance Management Act and also I think even in the Constitution is that funds, there has to be fiscal responsibility on the part of incoming governors. And that is tied to something else that we must establish a proper and functioning civil service at the counties mm. so that the, 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 the civil service at the counties are able to function irrespective of the incoming governor or another governor outgoing or a disaster like the one we are seeing in Nairobi. Mm. If we had entrained a clear structure of the public service, uh, Nairobi would not be having any difficulty. But are, are governors putting their legacies before development? I don't think so. Uh, you know, uh, counties are at their infancy. They are unlike national government, and they have got uh, problems all over. Mm -hmm. First of all, putting the structures in place, having staff, mm -hmm. and then a national government that is not cooperative. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, Nairobi just briefly, because BBI is proposing that Nairobi should be uh, managed as a metropolitan uh, city. What do you think of that proposal? And, and if, if, if Nairobi should be treated differently, do we have also then other counties where another argument could be made for giving it some kind of special status? No, I don't think so. It's possible for us to get a, a proper administrative structure under an elected governor in uh, Nairobi. And there is absolutely no reason. All we need to do in Nairobi is to strengthen. We can put together two or three uh, sub counties to become a borough like they are mm -hmm. in the UK right. so that there is clear structures and also um, the mistake in Nairobi is that even people who were elected uh, they came in through in, even interference with the electoral process really because I don't think, uh, I have never believed that uh, Songo offered uh, a real uh, program of action. But he was because wildly he popular. Never, are you saying he we was know him, we, We've known him all along. But it's okay with popularity. That is, those are some of the challenges of democracy. But you still can't replace democracy with anything else. You can't bring in a commission to run Nairobi. You can't bring in an administ a PC to run Nairobi. You can't appoint a minister to come and write, run Nairobi, a metropolitan minister to, to run Nairobi. Who are you appointing uh, when you yourself, you have not even passed the mark of performance. The think, best uh, thing it shouldn't be run by a cabinet secretary. No, it no. must continue to be an elective position as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is to look at the structure of Nairobi mm -hmm. and whether we can do some other supportive structure below Nairobi. Those we things. can have Nairobi as yeah. the super region. As a, as a region. Because first of all, as a region. We, as a region. Mm -hmm. And then we can now have counties which are smaller, like municipalities that we normally have in other cities, uh, like uh, London, for and example. And do you mean region as in the way Bomas draft proposed, the way Raila Odinga was proposing? We can even have Nairobi as a special region, which will have three tire system, that, uh, another tire mm -hmm. below the county. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing we must do is to put in place a civil service that is recognized, that is supported, and that is perpetual. Somebody works and works, but they don't work at the whims of a governor, or when this governor goes out, the fellow goes also. There is no sustainability of work. Finally, will the Health Service Commission do that? I don't think so. The Health Service will create more confusion because you are not going to employ people and send them to the counties and then you expect the governors to give them medicine. And then they sell all the medicine and the blame goes back to the governor. You cannot discipline the same fellows. All we need to do is to put in place a proper civil service within the counties. All right. Former Governor Isaac Ruta speaking to us. Time for us to take a short break on Punchline. When we return, my oh my, has he written a book <laughs> that is worth reading. We're up next with Musalia Mudavadi, ANC party leader, on his autobiography. Stay with us.